Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bidami and this is Jedi The Fallen Order, a third-person action-adventure game developed by Respawn Entertainment and published by Electronic Arts. It's the third game developed by Respawn Entertainment and, ironically, the third Star Wars game published by Electronic Arts, which is uh, rather laughable and insulting to any Star Wars fans considering the fact that EA had, was given a 10-year contract with Disney to create and publish Star Wars content, and what do they have to show for it? Uh, one dead Battlefront... Re well, yeah. One d dead Battlefront reboot, and a controversial sequel to it, which which was, for all intents and purposes, a Star Wars-themed casino, which prompted the American Congress and a lot of... Well, uh, and the Belgian and UK's government, and a lot of a lot of governments, to be honest, to not only investigate, but consider banning the game altogether in their countries. And that's not something you should... to make... Uh, that's not something to take lightly. That's... That really tells you how greedy and incompetent Electronic Arts is with... Well, not only Star Wars, but the, with anything they're, they're publishing. They... They are trying to milk money from anyone, and... They honestly did try to find loopholes to get to sell their games around. I mean, surprise mechanics. I mean, so loot boxes are nuts because gambling. That's surprise mechanics. Well, newsflash: pirating is also considered surprise discount. Uh, granted, I do not promote pirating, but uh, yeah, if there's a if the game is considered abandonware or if the publisher is EA, I would consider the option. I'm not saying you should do it, but uh, you can do it. Uh, to put it like that. Anyway, uh, where was I? Oh yes, the this game. Honestly, I was I was skeptical when this game was announced, and I was still skeptical when the when reviewers when big name reviewers were reviewing this game. I mean, Angry Joe gave this game an 8 out of 10, and and that, he's just an example. There were I did watch several other reviewers, but at the moment he come he's the first one that comes to mind since I rewatched his review recently for and for the sake of research and preparation for this video. But uh, anyway, um, a lot of reviewers and general public gave this game pretty decent, a pretty decent review scores, so I was inclined to to give this game a try. It wasn't for the story, since uh, this is a Disney canon, and that was ruined a long time ago. I mean, Dave Filoni and his Clone Wars series just took the popular parts of the original canon and butchered them to a... to a very insulting level of... of childish storytelling in my book. And I... I honestly didn't enjoy the Clone Wars series when I... I did... I did try to enjoy it a bit, but... Oh, that was... I... Mentally speaking, I was drained when every time I saw that. Especially since I did consume a lot of Star Wars in my... Well, even before the series was... Uh, even before the Clone Wars series was created or announced. I, I was a big-time fan of the Star Wars franchise while LucasArts was still... Uh, well, Lucas Arts were still solo, but uh, once uh, Disney rolled in, and I mean, once Filoni rolled in and Disney took over, I kind of gave up on on the IP in, in general. I just don't want to, don't want to be a, I do not want to be a, I do not want to support the franchise anymore. I, that's that's the only thing I wanted to say. But anyway, uh. As I said, I decided to give this game the benefit of the doubt because Respawn Entertainment did give a did leave a very did leave a very good impression on me with their Titanfall 2 release. So I wanted to support a good developer. So I went out of my way and purchased the game on. Well, I purchased it from a bargain bin in my local store and for a relatively cheap price, which was a little less under a dollar. So that should have been my first alarm bell, but. Anyway, uh, what is uh, Jedi The Fallen Order? It's a mixture of Uncharted and Dark Souls, 
to put it lightly. And honestly, it's it's not a good mixture of those games, uh, I just, if I do say so myself. It it does borrow the good elements of the gameplay, but they're not they're not too opti- not they're not well optimized, in my opinion. That and I'll show you that what I mean by that when we get to the gameplay. But uh, you should. But before we take before that, we'll take a look at the options menu. So the first message I got from the game when I booted it up for the first time was this game is best enjoyed with a controller. Do not sit too close and play this with a mouse and keyboard. I am paraphrasing a bit, but the original message was just to play with a controller. That's what we recommend. And uh, that should have been my second alarm bell once, uh, once I started playing this. As you can see, the game is... It has a decent control scheme, all things considered. Every action has a separate button attached to it. And all the keys are remindable for both the controller and the keyboard which is always nice. As you can see, I can rebind... I can rebind every action to a separate key, which I honestly do support when it comes to developers uh, doing this, especially when they're porting from the console. But it, this shows that this game was developed with consoles in mind first and foremost, and the PC was an afterthought. Uh, granted, I do... I do have some. I did have some enjoyment while playing this game, but uh, uh, okay, that's the uh, that's the story for uh, for later. As you can see, there are several modes of controls. One is for vehicles. Second one is for the map navigation. There's also climbing. There's swimming, and there's on foot movement and combat. And most of it will, most of your traversal will be done on foot. And yeah, okay, that's uh, we'll get to that when we get to that. But, but as you can see, the c controls are rebindable and all bound to a different, different control. Uh, all controls are rebindable to separate keys, which is always a good thing in my book. Gameplay options are also well d defined and. Well, not rebindable, they're adjustable. So you can, uh, you can enable or disable quick time events. I disabled, I did this, I did enable quick time events for the sake of this video. But I would recommend that you disable, uh, disable the UI, no, that, yeah, that you disable the UI input holds, which you would require, which asks you to hold, uh, uh, which, which uh, which means that you have to hold a certain key for a couple of seconds before you can take before uh, before a certain action is uh, sorry yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry my nose is clogged up so <laughs> so sometimes I yeah sorry excuse me I have a bit of a cold again so <laughs> I'm talking in. Uh, talking and breathing can be a bit tricky when my nose gets clogged up. Uh, anyway, uh, as I was saying, uh, you have separate, uh, you can disable subtitle, enable or disable subtitles, scale them up, choose a language for them, and disable UI, and disable UI input holes, which is, uh, basically disables the, the need to hold a certain button to confirm a, to confirm your choice uh, on the UI screen, which saves you time and and it's less annoying than yeah, it mostly saves you time and it's not so annoying. Uh, we'll we'll see what I mean by that. You will see what my what I'm talking about when we get to the gameplay. Auto locking, I would recommend that you uh, keep it disabled. Uh, the game does not require that. Uh, Kind of requires it, kind of doesn't. Uh, uh, but personally, I don't play with auto lock enabled. I lock on to enemies if I have to, but most of the time I just play without it. If you do lock onto a a target, it you can choose if it will. You can choose whether you want to turn it off, uh, the auto switching off, or if you want to focus on the next visible enemy. But uh, that's kind of dodgy in my in my experience. Sometimes the camera will act like, even though you're surrounded by free guy, free enemies, the camera will not register. I 
anyone until you get hit by someone. So you're, uh, you're. I wouldn't rely on it too much if I were you. Uh, visual speak, uh, visuals, uh, as you can see, are video effects such as motion blur, film grain, chromatic aberrations, and camera shaking, as well as brightness. You can adjust these effects here for uh, uh, since I'm sitting next to the right in front of the screen, I would recommend that you turn these off. But just for the sake of the video, I'm gonna keep these things turned on. It's I did watch this from a I did try to play this with a controller at one point from a distance, and then I admit the game does look beautiful from when you're sitting away when you're sitting on a couch or playing from when you're lying down and just staring at the game from a distance. But if you're in, in a chair right in front of the computer, uh, turn these things off. It's just adds more. It clutters up the, it clutters up the screen with unnecessary effects and makes the game much more difficult than it needs to be. And also it's, it's straining on the eyes and basically you'll, you won't feel so good after a while, after a while. It's, I won't say it's causing nausea, but I did have a slight head headache every time I. It did cause me a lot of head minor headaches when I finished playing. So, I recommended you turn these off. The, so, on the video side of things, you can, you can adjust the texture quality, visual effects, post processing, view distance, graphical quality, dynamic resolution scaling, VSync on or off, adjust. Frame rates to your own personal preference, and also uh, choose which uh, windowed mode you prefer: w full screen, windowed, windowed, or just full screen. And then you can adjust your, which will adjust, which will allow you to adjust the resolution. Uh, I would recommend that you go with windowed full screen because uh, if you want to Alt Tab or use the Home key and you're in full screen mode, it will not allow you to do so. So windowed full screen. Is my recommend recommendation for for playing this one if you have multiple processes if you have multiple uh, programs running on in the background that you want to check up check on them real quick. Audio options are nicely create are uh, nicely done. You have a master volume, separate uh, music effects, dialogue options. Uh, you can adjust every volume to your personal preference. You can adjust your audio output. And the dynamic range of of the said device to your own personal preference. Extras are just some uh, user agreements and privacy policy credit se credit sequence and privacy cookie policy, as well as the usage data you could share with EA. I would recommend that you turn this off for for privacy sake. It's not something you want to. I, I honestly don't want to give electronic arts my personal information because who knows what, how will they abuse it? So turn this off if you can. Uh, I doubt it will, I doubt it does much. I'm pretty sure that electronic arts is still going to try to steal some of your personal information, but this might limit it to a certain degree. Because let's be honest, usage data will always be taken from as long as there is internet, your personal data, PC data will be, will be sent to the publishers if, even if you did uh, agree or disagree to the user data sharing. And this just limits how much you will, you will share with them. So that's about it for the, for the options menu. It's, it's a well optimized menu and uh, I do like the amount of customization you can get from it. Uh, then again, this is a Unreal Engine developed game, so most of these visual options are kind of a must when it comes to <laughs> Unreal, at least in my book. But that's uh, uh, that's uh, that's just me. Now, finally, let's uh, well, well, we'll get into the gameplay I'm currently playing, but just to give you a uh, just to give you a bit of a uh, uh, yeah, okay, let's try this again, <laughs> just to explain a couple of things for. Uh, newcomers when to the game as you can see you have four difficult difficulty modes and every difficulty mode will affect your 
uh, will affect the parry timing, incoming and and enemy aggression, uh, incoming damage and enemy aggression, as well as your damage. Into, well, it will not only not only affect the damage you can you. Okay, it will affect how how much damage the den- the enemies will deal to you, but it will also reduce the damage you can deal to them. And their aggression. Uh, I mean, I played this on. I did try to. I did play it two. I did start two separate. Uh, I started two separate playthroughs for this one. Uh, one on Jedi Knight and one on the Jedi Grandmaster, and this is the difficulty mode we'll be playing on. And honestly, when it came to aggression, I didn't see much of a difference. Personally, it's. Uh, then again, the this is an EA title and. Most of their uh, most of their games are not known for incredibly intelligent AI. I mean, seriously, I did. Uh, I honestly stood right uh, right next to a stormtrooper without any. Uh, there were no obstacles next between us, and I just stood next to him, and he didn't notice me for at least a minute until I started moving. So uh, yeah, the. AI can be a bit iffy, so I'm not sure about the aggression they... Uh, what, uh, I'm not sure what aggression actually affects, uh, how far they will chase you, and or, or what, but it's... I honestly did not find anything that didn't change much. The only thing that changes it, the only thing the difficulty affects is the frame rates of the frame rates of animation the enemies have and uh, their damage output in total. And you'll see what I mean by frame rate, uh, by animation frame rates in a moment. Just uh, give us, give me a minute or two for the game to load. So yeah, that's... Uh, finally, this is... Uh, as you can see, the game uh, is still loading up textures. Was. So... Uh, I mean, uh, as you can see, I'm not too. Oh, okay. I'm gonna have. I'll have to compress this for YouTube a lot, so some visual effects will be lost. But I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure I have anti-aliasing. Uh, give me a second. I'm gonna check this real quick. I'm fairly certain I did turn anti-aliasing and V-Sync on, V-Sync on and off. Yeah, anti-aliasing is turned on to the maximum, and I can still. And my character still has blocky. I don't know. I'm not sure it's a. Uh, okay, I was, I'm turning his character. I'm turning the camera a bit, but and I hope you can see that uh, his hair, uh, his character ball is distorting in front of us. And visually speaking, the visually speaking, the the maps are nicely designed. They're really beautiful to look at, and the character models are well detailed, but. Uh, yeah, the the moment you start turning the camera, the characters will start well falling apart. If to put it mildly, and uh, as you can see, the lightsaber just disappeared. What the? Okay, that's that happened. So yeah, um, as I was saying. Uh, uh, observe. This is uh, this is Star Wars. Uh, this is EA's AI in general. They spot once they spot you and take some damage, they'll just walk away and just uh, I know dance in place for some weird reason. That's but if you move, <laughs> move. Whoa. But if you move far away, they will just. Uh, if you move somewhere where you should be seen, they will just start. They'll start moving towards you and start flowing in the air. Uh, buddy. Oi. Uh, yeah. As you can see, the AI is somewhat. Uh, not somewhat, it's really dim with it. As you can, as you just saw the. I mean, I'm standing right here. I can see them, and I'm fairly certain they can see me. But no, nope, nothing. They're not gonna do anything. And 
Not sure what exactly this aggression. What this aggression. As I said, the aggression is not so uh, accurate. But. Scared, uh, Jedi! Come on, run! Uh, yes, the. The game's AI is not something to. to write home about, to put it mildly. They're fairly dim witted. So I'm not, as I said, this uh, aggression meter that the game pre presented to us, I'm fairly certain that does not affect anything. The, if they were so aggressive that melee guy that the Zabrak that was followed, that came here and started walking away, should have continued attacking us. And as you can see, there are some clipping issues the game as you can see, I, my feet just uh, sank into the rock. So uh, I'm not sure what ex how exactly would uh, would you say this is a good this is a uh, one of the greatest Star Wars games ever made. I I truly find that stupid and false. I find it as false advertising, honestly. And uh, I mean, you had better. With Lightsaber Combat and Jedi Outcast and Jedi Academy, and those are, and those are games from the early 2000s, and I mean that's 20 more than 20 years has passed since the last uh, Jedi Outcast and Jedi Academy game was created, and still, they cannot, no Star Wars game so far has even came close to uh, matching them. And there we go, the lightsaber is broken like again. I wonder if the Knight Brothers got him. Mm -hmm. So yeah, as I was... Uh, I wanted to talk about the visual presentation of the game, but... Uh, yeah, the, as you saw, the AI is... Uh, the AI is not very bright, in my opinion. Uh, we'll touch a bit... Uh, we'll touch about... Uh, we'll touch a bit more about the AI later down the line, but first things first, let's... Let's just look at the... Let's uh, let's take a look at the good points of the game, the visual presentation and the texture quality of the characters and character models and and the maps is beautiful to look at. There, I I'll give credit where credit's due. This uh, visually speaking, this game looks beautiful, and the uh, the sound design is also well made. I mean, the music's the music's good when you hear it. The footsteps vary depending on the surface, the wind, and uh, and if you can, I'm not sure if you can hear the sound of the cloth of this flag here, but uh, yes, as, as you can see, the visually speaking and on visual and audio side of things, the game really does look Look, it sounded. It sounds amazing. Every surface that you can interact with is nice. Well, is highlighted in a decent way that you can recognize it. An interactable surface. And <gasps> excuse me, I still have a. I have a bit of a cold, so it's. Uh, so yeah, I'm still trying. Trying to record and not sneeze. <laughs> it's kind of challenging. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, the on the visual side of things, the game really does does look beautiful. There are some visual glitches that we already established. Just look at this: the characters just falling apart. A la, I mean, his pixels are just—I uh, won't say they're dying out, but they're stretching themselves or. Uh, Okay, I didn't watch the Avengers, but you know that scene where Thanos just destroys half the population and everyone turns to turns to dust. Uh, that's uh, that's the impression I'm getting here. That uh, my character is one uh, one finger step away from just falling apart. I mean, the, uh, I mean, I'm moving the camera and he's getting disjointed, and I'm not even doing this quickly. I, Whoa, 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 that's, uh, that's terrifying, I mean, lightsaber, parts of the lightsaber just disappear, the face becomes just disjointed, if you're standing still, 
Oh, look. If you're standing still and just observing, the game does look beautiful. The shadow effects, the character details, the lighting, that's all... It's all beautiful to look at. And same goes for the sound. It's really unnerving once you get in somewhere and... Oh! As you can see, uh, the enemy design is... Uh, the enemies are also nicely designed and they do sound... Oh! And they sound uh, terrifying. Well, they do have a decent sound to back them up. I mean, uh, as you just heard, uh, that was a spider and it, it did sound like a spider. And that was a big spider and it sounded like a big spider as it walked and hissed at me. And, uh, That's the, uh, this is the UI soundtrack. Well, not sound, but, uh, yeah, it's the soundtrack as well as the audio effects you can hear as throughout the game. And they will do sound well created. Uh, they do sound nice and they're nicely audible. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna show the, I'll, I'll show this, uh, I'll show the skill tree a bit later, but I just wanted to give you the audio cues for now. Uh, yeah, but there is a bit of a problem when it comes to sound design. As uh, as you can see, you, I can still hear characters discussing things. I'm right here, you stupid bozo. Okay, so for a second, they were discussing something and they were running towards me. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, the sound design really does sound impactful. The the lightsaber sounds like a lightsaber. The energy weapons these guys were using also sounded apart, but the sound mixing can uh, can be confusing at, at times. Uh, as you saw, these guys were walking were it seemed like these guys were about to attack me and they were discussing something uh, they were just discussing something and and then it's and then suddenly it just went to intruder appears attack attack as I, as I said uh, the game has some decent elements but the 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 problems outweigh the the Bugs and issues with the game I have are the negatives outweigh the positives way too much. Uh, so far, these were just basic creeps we were dealing with, and this and they can be challenging when they want to. But uh, come on, climb up. They can be challenging, but not for the good for the right reasons. Uh, as you saw, as you just saw, I. Whoa. We are what the? Enough. He is right. Uh, okay. As I was saying, uh, the negatives outweigh the positives. The the enemies can be challenging. That's true, but not in the most uh, not for the right reasons. In Dark Souls, you have to manage your stamina in order to block or attack or run or do anything mostly and in this game you're you can attack indefinitely but if, the problem here is the game the game does not have a stamina meter to the, the game does not have a stamina meter that The game does not have a stamina meter per se uh, when it comes to when it comes to melee attacks. It has a it has a it has a defense meter as well as a force meter that will dictates how you defend or or attack someone. So if you know how to abuse the AI, you can attack indefinitely. But unfortunately, the 
The game's oh crap. The game's uh, animation cycles are limited, as I mentioned before. As you saw, I did I did lay into the guy quite a bit with the lightsaber, and he still and he still attacked me like it was nothing. Yet. And that's the that's the issue I have. I think that's the issue I have with the game. It's a lack of animations for certain events. If you attack someone you, with a lightsaber specifically, which is, I won't say it's the, it's a beam of sunlight, but it does have the, ther, it does have a thermal energy and temperature of close to the sun, to be honest. So it should be able to cut through most, most materials without too much trouble. I mean, okay, this uh, since this is an Unreal Engine game, some. Unless something is specifically designed to be destroyed, most most things in the world are indestructible, but... Uh, what I was trying to say is... Uh, well, yes, the... Come on, climb up. Uh, the enemy AI it cheats. Tends to cheat a bit with Katsu. Uh, the enemy, the AI tends to cheat a bit when it comes to nice work. When it comes to combat, so uh, uh, okay, most of these guys were ranged opponents, but if you start attacking a melee fighter, he will ignore. He won't do any staggering animations. He will just kill. start attacking you what, like it's nothing. Uh, this is a mo this is a common occurrence for boss fights, and thankfully there is a boss fight right next to us. Uh, this is an optional boss, and it's just a uh, whoa. It's a uh, common whoa. What the? What the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I dodged! Uh, this is just a... Uh, excuse me, one second, I get a run. Uh, as I said, the enemy AI yeah, has, has a tendency to cheat a bit when it comes to... When it comes to... When it comes to combat. Help, BD. Uh, they either ignore... The... They don't give you much of a... The game does not give you much of a terms of oh god run. Uh, the game does not let you. BD, got something to help me? <sighs> okay, that was uh... the game does not have much of a rest uh, grace period when it comes to enemy attacks. I mean, you should be punished for being too greedy with your attacks, but. As you saw, I didn't have much in terms of attack. My attack opportunities were limited when I tried to fight that fight that monster. So I, he immediately recovered. There was no recovery animation. He just... I mean, there is a slight recovery animation, but by the time I even landed the first blow, I was already... I was already down to 1% of my health. That's not how. That's not a good combat system. It's the as I said, the enemy, uh, the enemy animations frame rates are reduced a bit. So you're not actually, you're not given much of a choice when it comes to combat. You have to, you are, in, in, well, let's say you are encouraged to use your force powers to deal with the enemies, but uh, force powers your your force powers are limited to stasis, push, pull. And that's about it. You, it's not a well optimized combat system. I mean, uh, granted, story wise, our hero was 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 a child in training, was a Jedi in training, and he barely began using force force powers when when Order sixty six was given. But 
I'm pretty sure that uh, stasis is a bit of an advanced ability. Force push and pull, they're, they're pretty common for every force user, but I'm pretty sure that force, uh, that the stasis field that slows enemies down is is a bit more of an advanced technique, so I'm, I'm kind of surprised that he doesn't know how to use the Jedi mind trick or something something more useful. And uh, the, I'm getting sidetracked, the enemy animation cycles as you see, they're fairly short and that map is, is it just me or is the background just dying out? Yeah, it's jittering, it's breaking down. And anyway, as, as I was saying, the the, the gameplay is not that uh, it's not good, it, in my opinion. It's it works uh, around sixty percent of the time, and uh, you're, if it works good, you don't notice uh, you don't notice a problem. But if the gameplay is bad, you notice all the problems. That's what I'm trying to say. It, as you saw, I in the boss fight, I had some on normal circumstances. I'd probably have a couple of a second or two to do one or two attacks and injured the opponent while he was on the floor exhaust, exhausted after that uh, heavy attack he just did that's when when he was flushing in red that's when his heavy attacks are coming and they're unblockable so you have to dodge them but unfortunately he recovered almost immediately so I couldn't do any damage to actual damage to him I had to I had to attempt to use my force stasis but if I punched him that would just they would just release him from the stasis and I would get hit. So, uh, uh, let's, uh, let's move on a bit and uh, let's explore the area a bit more. There's something in there. As you can see, there are collectibles around the world, around the, around the worlds you can, uh, okay, I'll, I'm jumping the gun here, but, uh, this game has a lot of collectibles which will affect your customization. And, I'm not gonna lie, most of these outfits are... Yeah, they're not very interesting in my in my opinion. The, it just changes the color of the suit you're wearing and... It's not a good suit. I If I had more customization options such as, do I want to wear a... Do I want to wear a different skin for my torso and different skin for my pants, I'd probably be more interested in customization. But as, as it is, you can just choose a color scheme for for your ship, your droid companion, and that's about it. Your regular outfit and the poncho you're wearing, which is... That's yeah, just stupid. I mean, the collectibles in the game are n unimpressive. And once you find a workbench, you can get an upgrade for your for BD-1 and occasionally an upgrade for the blade for your own sword but I am I wasn't too interested but honestly I was not that interested in I'm not that interested in I'm not that interested in gathering and gathering uh, pointless cosmetics that do next to nothing. Also, there's something I really don't like about the game is how some rules uh, just get uh, uh, the game ignores certain rules of its uh, certain rules that created by itself. Uh, as you can see, I can I can walk off. I can jump off the. I can jump off or walk off the ledge, but I cannot roll over it, which is rather, rather annoying if you're trying to dodge. If I'm trying to dodge an attack that's coming in, especially from a big, from a big opponent. Oh, lovely! Now there's a bunch of them. Thankfully, I can abuse the AI's stupidity a bit. As you can see, most of these guys are just... Make up your mind, will you? Do you want to attack me or do you want to... As you can see, the AI's collision and... Then... 
collision detection as well as pathfinding is rather rather dim I die. See, I'm gonna stand here in the box and nothing. So you're just gonna fall for that, you know. I mean, I can attack them through the box. This is this game's broken. No more light. And this happened. And this is something I. Uh, this is and this is where the problems begin. Honestly, as so far, I hope you just saw that uh, one attack can uh, certain attacks from enemies can damage their allies. Some, so you think that? Okay, let's try this again. Uh, I, I hope you just saw what I was referring to. the The game is it's broken. As you can see, there are no enemies to spot me here, and then uh, suddenly I'm just spotted. And suddenly he's a... Ugh. Did you? Did you really? Uh, yeah, the game's rule sets are a bit iffy, if I do say to myself. And also, the game does have a nasty habit of... This, uh, the game kind of loses frame rates if you dodge into certain corners for a bit. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna... At this point, I'm just gonna... They just list the negative things about the game. Uh, so, as I said, uh, visually speaking, the the game does have a a lot of go a lot of things going for it that's beautiful to look at, and the sound of it is nice. But the animations are iffy, as you just saw. I mean, my leg just got disjointed and rejointed, and spurred the third joint in the in the knee, apparently, and the second and. Yeah, there are visual bugs and, and and the collision and pathfinding and a lot of things in the game are just don't work properly. Animations uh, animations do work uh, well from a distance. So if I if I sit sit back on the couch and play this. With a controller, yeah, this game will look beautiful and will look fun to play, but if you're playing this uh, closer, you'll notice these these issues. Not to mention that the... Not to mention that the... Show me your famous Jedi skills. Not to mention that the game is just, uh, uh, yeah, there are a lot of problems in the game I want to mention, for example, the... The combat system in itself, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, when it's, when it works, it works, but the game wants to be a movie experience, as well as Dark Souls, as, as well as uh, Uncharted's. And that's not a good combination in my book because uh, look at this. I'm trying to focus on on sliding down this uh, sliding that sliding down the slide. It, but when it happens, uh, I'm mostly focused on what's in front of me. But the camera either zooms in or zooms out to give me a cinematic view of the of something else. So it can be. It's really counterproductive on occasion. Yeah, the game has a lot of problems. The camera is... <sighs> the, the camera will... will switch from one cinematic set piece to another if you're... no matter where you're, where you're standing or what you're doing. If you're in combat and uh, an, en an enemy vehicle shows up, the, camera the game will not pause and your camera will go up to watch the incoming transport ship. 
while every other enemy just beats you up and you die without without warning on for it. And you die and you die to a, basically what you die without doing anything. Which is rather frustrating. And the enemies in the game are also as I said, dim with it. And sometimes the and sometimes the and sometimes they spot you without Sometimes you're spotted with, even though you don't see enemies. Uh, sometimes the enemies can see and shoot at you without shoot at you without without too much trouble while you while you don't see anything. So as you can see, I'm currently trying to I'm trying to get rid of the the archers first and foremost, and I'm in plain sight. So I'm in front, right in front of them in plain sight, and they're doing. And they're just waiting for it. The, uh, as I said, AI is pretty dumb. The, the game's rule sets are the AI, and the game's rule set is retarded on most occasions. Uh, you'd think that uh, force push or uh, force pull would work on uh, regular human on regular humanoid enemies, but no. These guys can dodge the attacks without too much trouble. They can, they can attack you Come on. You're out of sight! Put the, the bloody saber down! Oh god, I hate this game. I mean, seriously, the it's you're still treated like you're in a combat situation, despite the fact that you are obviously not. I mean, this guy is—I don't know—he's trying to squat or do something, but yeah, the the clipping issues and dumb AI are one thing, but. I really hate the thing I hate the most about the game is how the rule sets change every five seconds. You cannot dodge over a ledge, but you can run off of it. Apparently. The uh the force which should affect your which should which should get rid of which should damage your the force abilities you have present should. You cannot win. I dodged it. What the? What the? Oh. Yes, as you can see, the game is. It's a uh, not a good. Uh, it's not a good mixture of either Uncharted or Dark Souls, as I hope we'll demonstrate just now. The uh, most of these games, if you are spotted by long-range opponents, they will start shooting at you the moment they see. In this game, they see you, but they do nothing. And once you move, you think you're out of their visual range, they'll start shooting for you, shooting at you through through walls and whatnot. Right. Even, and if you if you dodge an attack. It will still connect to you, Adam, for some weird reason. That's that works specifically for boss fights and bigger opponents. And observe, this is I'm not sure what these guys are. Uh, you gonna attack me or are you just gonna wait there? And yeah, that's uh. That's what I mean when I say combat. The that the gameplay is rather, rather annoying to do. Uh, it's supposed to be Dark Souls, where you have to know how to block and parry at, at an appropriate moment in order to open your enemies up for for an attack. But if you try to open them up with the usage of force abilities, that's nope. That's not gonna work. That's not gonna. We're not let, gonna let you do that. Force powers are just meant to. Uh, help you solve 
will help you solve puzzles in the world, apparently. And co- using force abilities in combat is uh, yeah, it's a big mis- it's a mistake, honestly. So uh, anyway, uh, why do we? Uh, while we fought, you saw that there was a experience bar filling up, and once you get killed, you lose most of your experience. You lose all the experience accumulated so far. And that's uh, that's the Dark Souls, uh, Dark, Dark Souls influence here. And but uh, sadly, uh, Respawn couldn't just uh, well, Respawn did something smart here. They they. Added a fixed amount of experience you can gather through combat. Uh, once you fill up the meter, you will get a skill point. And if you die, you do not lose skill points; you just lose the experience. So it's uh, so it's a good incentive to actually. So it doesn't punish you too much for playing poorly, but it provides. Uh, but it's not a. Uh, how do I put it? It's a. It, does provide me with a decent incentive to go out there and r- try to reclaim my experience uh, if I'm close to getting a skill point, but uh, it's not as punishing or not as frustrating as Dark Souls, because uh, in Dark Souls, you do not have a experience limit until you get a skill point. You have to... Uh, the the amount of experience you gather can be spent to upgrade your your other attributes and abilities. Uh, same goes for for the Fallen Order. Depending on how many skill points you have, you can upgrade your lightsaber damage, your lightsaber skills, your survival skills, which is running, dodging, uh, your maximum force uh, force pool, uh, force man, mana pool, and as well as your health bar. But uh, most of these upgrades are, I won't say they're, I won't say they're pointless, but uh, most of the time they. They do not work. That's the thing. And my, that's the thing. I, as, as you saw, the when I tried to push one of the enemy melee combats, he just dodged. He just did a flip, flip back and ignored all the damage, which is pretty annoying. But, okay, that's connected. Sure, connected to me, and I was no, nowhere near that. So this is how parry, but how parry works. And uh, there is a white bar right next to. As you can see, there's a white bar right next to the health bar, which indicates your defense uh, stamina defense. And once the white uh, white bar is depleted, you cannot defend anymore. That's oh, uh, that's kind of reasonable. But uh, considering the fact that I can attack more or less indefinitely, with with different uh, lightsabers, or let's just to demonstrate, I have a two bladed, I have a two bladed lightsaber as well as a single bladed bladed one, and I also. The fuck? No what the fuck? Yeah, as you can see, this game has has problems when it comes to when it comes to combat. To put it mildly, it's there is no grace period for the player to actually recover and get up from from the floor. If he falls down, he will he'll just get dockpiled by everyone and everything. But when you th- but if you think that the grace period is also given to the enemy, we'll begin uh, we'll begin when the enemy is knocked down, forget that they will just automatically they'll just get up and attack you with without warning. So the combat is it's challenging for really the wrong reasons. There is no there is no actual uh, stamina to manage or you're not giving anything. You're not giving much to do. Some attacks are undodgeable or un- I just I dodge it and I still get hit. Wonderful. Okay, where's the last? What? 
the actual... Okay, you're dead. Okay, I'm killing him. It's good. Anyway, as you saw already, I... Once I get killed, my experience is is taken by the enemy, and if I if I can kill the set, if I can hit the set enemy, it, the the health will my health force and experience will be restored. Right. But unfortunately, unfortunately, the enemy has that nasty habit of spamming everything or doing nothing at all. So you can, so you end up in a situation that's either easily winnable, or you just get insta killed by by something. That's and that's really annoying in my book. But uh, there's one, there is one thing I have to give the game credit for. The exploration part of the game is really well done. The combat's frustrating, but uh, Respawn did a lot of good work here. I mean, this this is not an open world. This is a this is an explorable level with uh, this is an explorable map where you where you have to come back multiple times because you don't have all the necessary abilities to explore just yet. So uh, I couldn't get here. Re well, I couldn't get that. Yeah, okay, let's try this again. I could get across this bridge before because I didn't have the double jump ability. But once I learned that ability, I. I came back here in order to explore a bit more and level my character up a bit. And level myself up, up a bit. And then I came across this hurdle because... Uh, this hurdle where I could climb up the the broken wall because I didn't have the... I did not have the claws, climbing claws, for example. So, yeah, there's a bit of a metroidvania here as well. Uh, elements. Uh, there are metroidvanian elements as well. As you progress through the story, you will unlock additional abilities and as well as additional gadgets, which will allow you to explore more of the map and discover new collectibles, as well as upgrades for your droid, which is a which is a nice thing. I have, I'll have to give it credit, you, uh, credit where credit is due. Ed. Every planet you can go to with your ship has a big well. It's not open. It's not an open world, but it has a pre-designed map that's. Meant to be explored at a specific, specific pace, and this is where Respawn is at its best. They create, they create maps big enough to actually explore and enjoy. That will allow you to explore them and have fun if you're if you ignore the combat. But uh, yeah, apart from the combat, the exploration part of the game is superb. I really love. The, Going around, I love going around different areas and using and solving puzzles with my force abilities. That's that's a good thing. I do not enjoy the combat at all. It's it wants to be two separate things and one at once, and that's not how Dark Souls or Uncharted should work. Uncharted works because you have multiple enemies to deal with, but you're shooting at them mostly, and you have to utilize both stealth and and guns to get rid of them. Dark Souls, uh, Dark Souls is at at home when it, you're fighting off smaller groups of enemies, but they all have to follow the same rule set as you. They have a limited stamina bar that has to be that has to be followed. And what the? Oh, now you can. Sh oh, now you can see me and shoot me. Seriously? Second shot came from. For oh God's sake! Come on, I'm right here. Shoot! You stupid idiots! Thank you. Okay, will you shoot? Will you shoot me? As you can see, yeah, the. This is my problem with the game. It's the combat really doesn't have any rules to follow. It's, I mean, that's uh, realistically speaking, yes. Most opponent uh, in real world opponents don't follow any rule sets for you. They just try to kill you. But in games, there is a there has to be a certain rule set. 
the that the player and the enemies have to follow in order to in order to make the game interesting and balanced. For example, I this guy. I, I I'm fairly certain I jumped from the pro from the appropriate height to do. Uh, I'm pretty sure I jumped from the appropriate height to do the necessary amount of damage to to these hats. And what the? Ah, oh, screw this game. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna rant on about the gameplay a bit more, but uh, yeah, the, this game really doesn't follow any rules of engagement when it comes to Dark Souls or what? What the? Oi! What just happened? The game does not will not let will not follow its own rules when it comes to combat. I mean, I'm limited to... Uh, everyone can attack indefinitely, okay. But uh, if I'm not... Uh, okay, let's uh, observe. If I dodge this, I should be... I should not get injured for dodging, seriously. Yeah, because I don't want to fight you. Uh, I think I'm fairly certain you just saw that uh, this guy was getting ready to swing at me, uh, so I attacked him, and he still it, he still managed to block that attack apparently. And that's something I really hate about Up the game. It's... Okay, you can. I have no idea what just happened, but... Uh, okay, I can... Uh, I can get hit if I'm attacking, and that will put me in a stagger animation, but if... By some weird... By some weird chance, I do the same thing to my enemy, they're... They're perfectly justified to attack me on the spot. I mean, uh... Okay, that's the sound right. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, if I try to interrupt my enemy's attack with uh, with my own, I will get punished. But the enemy can the enemy can injure me without too much trouble. The enemy can injure me and interrupt my attacks with uh, without any repercussions. And sometimes, uh, and sometimes this happens. The the climbing animation uh, will bug out, and I'll stand still for a couple of seconds because my character cannot recognize there's a light, uh, recognize the, ne the next climbable surface. So yeah, the game really, the game's broken, to put it simply, and uh, I I don't like it. And I also hate how the camera just uh, automatically. Wrestles the control away from you if you're trying to do something else. Just observe. I was, uh, I was oriented towards the door and I was going there, but when I got next to this, uh, this character, I, when I got next to the, uh, when I got next to Seer, I was automatically pulled in closer, and I, most of my, and the camera just focused on her automatically. It's not a good thing, honestly. I'm trying to. Especially if I'm in the middle of, I'm in the middle of combat. If the camera does that, I'll, I'll end up killed. I'll, I'll end up getting killed fairly quickly. I got Jedi. I'm fine. Yeah. It's it's really annoying, and and I generally don't. I am not enjoying myself because of it. The customization options of the game are, eh, well, they're not bad. Of all, all things considered, they. For what it's worth, you cannot customize your character's appearance, but you can customize your lightsaber and your... Uh, I won't say... I won't say outfit, because you only have the one, you can only choose the colors. So, customization options are limited, and I'm not a big... I'm not a big fan of this. But I do have to admit, the customization, customi customizing my own lightsaber 
to a smaller detail to the smallest detail is pretty nice. I can choose the the blade's uh, color. I can choose the the handle, the the grip, the the switch to turn the thing on. Yeah, it does have the visual speaking does does have some some merit, but uh, the gameplay in itself is it's uh, it's atrocious. It's atrocious in my book. It, I mean, the collectibles never do anything. Uh, the collectibles you can come across don't do much. They're just there for visual. Hey, Grease, you calling me? You sure these vines are safe? They're getting pretty big. Yeah, well, they're a pain in my palms trimming them every day. But yeah, they're fine, long as I don't forget to cut them. That's reassuring. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the most of these collectibles are just visual effects. They don't do anything for the gameplay. I mean, I collected these plants around across every plant I came across, uh, from every plant I came across, and they do next to nothing. You'd think that uh, collecting a uh, well, let's say this uh, bonsai tree from Kashyyyk would give me a better attunement, uh, attunement with force or expand my expand my force. Hello, expand my force abilities. Okay, I can see there's a little animal there. Come on, let me interact. Let me pet the animal. But yeah, as I said, most of these are just visual. Most of these things are just visual effects that you can. Ship on Zaffo? Think there's any good loot in that thing? Most of these are just uh, visual, just visual upgrades. They don't do anything for the gameplay. But uh, I do like the exploration in most of, in, in these games. It's Kinda what makes me interested in playing Back them. To I'm just gonna. So I'm just gonna switch up a bit. You think any Jedi will come out of hiding? Mm, what makes you think there are Jedi hiding? No, I'm just curious. Is there someone specific you're thinking of? Well, growing up, we heard tales of a green, pointy-eared, legendary Jedi master. And are you talking about Master Yoda? Yes, he is very. Nice. Wait, what? Who? No, no, I'm talking about Master Yaddle. The Jedi High Council member? Yeah, we all have our dreams, okay? <laughs> Let me have mine. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> okay, it's been a while since I heard about the Master Yaddle. About the land. Uh, she was a female version of Yoda, at least in the first movie. I think there was a bit of a lore about... There was some lore about her, but I, uh, it was minuscule if I were. So I'd never read up much about her. I, I should read about her her a bit more, but uh, anyway, I, as I said, uh, I hate the, uh, I hate the, I hate the combat portion of the gameplay in this game, it's, it's badly optimized, it's unresponsive, and, and it's really not doing the game any favors. I do like the, the voice acting and the and the visual presentation. Honestly, it's the, every planet is unique when it comes to design and the sound effects. But I'm not so sure about I'm not so sure about the characters themselves. Uh, I mean, the enemies do have their unique quirks. Uh, listening to stormtroopers discuss things is generally funny. But uh, my the characters I'm actually supposed to interact with and root for are uninteresting and and honestly dislikable. I mean, we did encounter Saw Gerrera at one point, and that guy is... I mean, I'm, I generally don't like his character as a whole. He is, he's a boring... Uh, he's a little... Uh, he's boring. He's boring. He's an... He's idiotic, and he generally just... And most lore that we discovered about him so far indicates that he is only interested in killing people. He is... That he is, he's not here to fight for this, to, for freedom. He's just there to kill, maim, and destroy. He is, he's no better than the, than the. Well, 
uh, to be fair, I think the Empire's standpoint on on life is that there are there, honestly there uh, a lot of parallels have been drawn with the Nazi regime. So let's uh, I, I'm not going to go there, but uh, yeah, the Empire in the movie in the original movies was was bad, but at least they didn't go for full blown murder. If they well, they did go for they did murder the whole. Well, uh, they did destroy Leia's planet, but I wouldn't know it. No, it's uh, Endor. No, no, it's not Endor. It's yeah, I can't remember right now what's the planet's name, but uh, uh, Empire mostly relied on scaring tactics and intimidation. They resorted to murder and destruction and curfews. I won't say as a last resort, but they did. Uh, they didn't murder outright without uh, just some general justification. I mean, most justifications were. Oh, they're just uh, basic uh, lies, but still, they weren't. They didn't actively obliterate everyone and everything without without reason. Sogarera seems like more. Uh, Sogarera is more of a. That's what Sogarera is, according to the lore. Apparently, he is mostly interested in murdering. That's that's his whole character, and that's why I just. I, I'm not a big fan of the rebels in this game. Uh, anyway, I don't want to spoil the story too much, but uh, Seer, I see you weathered the storm. I'm just gonna do a bit more voice acting. Say the same for the others who try to land here. What do you find? A crashed ship. I think it was a Republic Venator. A Venator? In this part of the galaxy? Must have gone down during the Clone Wars. I think there was a Jedi and their Padawan on board. And? I didn't search the whole ship, but it didn't look like there were any survivors. That's hard to. Hear. Regardless, a vessel like that, carrying one of our own. Uh, so yes, as you can see, the voice acting is superb, and and the designs are okay in my book. I mean, they don't look. I mean, they look like uh, a pair of smugglers. These two look like a pair of smugglers. So they they look like a starship crew. That's that's again, but uh, throughout the game, it. The, when it comes to cutscenes, it's implied that these two are helping you in on your mission, but most of the time they're just standing around and doing nothing, and you're the one doing all the hard lifting. And uh, animation-wise, when it comes to when it comes to Kel, our main character, he kind of looks like he is one step away from soiling himself in my book. And uh, actually, let's uh, just let's get you a bit closer. Uh, our pilot Grease, since he's an alien, his hey, Grease. his animations are. To dig up any ancient Zephonian treasures? No, we're not here to raid tombs. But I found something else: a Republic Venator crashed in the lake. Oh, a Venator! Those things are seriously built. Not easy to take down. Yeah, I'm not sure what caused the crash, but I know there was a Jedi and the Padawan on board. A Jedi must bring back some tough memories. So many lives lost. How could the Order have been so blind to the danger? Uh, as you can see, the animation is somewhat limited when you're when it comes to friendly characters as well. They're just standing there, and occasionally they move their their hands or something. Their facial movement, facial features are. Uh, I don't. It's. I'm not sure what to call it. It's not disturbing, but it's annoying to watch them in. The less said about Seer, the better. I, I mean, I know this is most most of these characters are designed off of real live, real live actors. Uh, I know that uh, the guy. Uh, okay, I didn't watch Gotham the uh, TV series, uh, the live action TV series, but I'm fairly aware this guy, uh, the guy we're playing is, is the one playing Joker in the series, if I'm not mistaken. At least that's what I heard. Uh, that's what I read, and uh, Seer. That's. Uh, uh, that's our quote-unquote co commander, companion, and uh, Wolfenstein, the new Colossus. At least, uh, eh, honestly, I'm, I'm not too... I'm not a big fan of the actress, to be honest. The, uh, I mean, I... Okay, let's put it like that. I, 
I do respect the actress's ability to portray her characters very convincingly. She she just doesn't have much of a material to work with. Not it now, just, Cal. I need to focus. I mean, she always looks so disinterested, and those eye, those bug eyes or fish eyes of hers that you know, start to give you a bit closer so you can see. I mean, animation-wise, those eyes are one uh, cough or a sneeze away from popping out of her skull. It's just uh, her character design, uh, her character model is. I'm not sure if it's disjointed or something, but it's really disturbing to look at her. I mean, and to be honest, the uh, the actress herself, she, uh, the actors themselves, they they do well, work well with what they're given, but their the material is almost non-existent, so we don't have much much to do with them. So yeah, their characters are boring, to, uh, to say the least. I really, they're not. They're um, the only reason I remember Sierra is because I saw her in a different in a in a couple of different games. And in most cases, she had that. Uh, uh, she had characters I either didn't like or just wasn't it wasn't interested in. And the only thing I noticed about her is that. Oh right, that's the uh, that's that character I didn't like when I saw her, and that's that's about it. Not to say that the actress is bad. I we really do do enjoy her performances when I see. Might be more to discover there with your improved skills. I do enjoy how she. I, I mean, she does uh, does work well with what she's got what she's given, but Lord, she has no material to work with. I bet BD One wouldn't mind helping you fix some things around here. But no, no, no. I don't need him fixing nothing. You keep your scumps off my ship. You know the work I put into this ship? You should feel lucky just to be aboard. This is a galaxy class luxury starliner. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh... Don't listen to them. I still love you. Anyway, uh, yeah, this is Jedi to Fallen Order. Would I recommend you buy it? Would I recommend that you buy it? Uh, no, I. Uh, if you find it in a bargain bin for a dollar or so, yeah, I'd recommend that you buy it then. But otherwise, I would avoid the game with with a white berth. It's the combat is broken. The exploration is fun, fun and interesting. But the characters are not interesting. On well, they aren't interesting at all. The the lore is, the story of the world is, I mean, you have to, it's given to you on a platter and and everything, but I'm, I, I'm not so sure if I would, I'd play this on a, longer than I have to. I'd, I'd play this uh, once and I'll probably, once I finish this, I'll probably uninstall the game permanently and never play it again. Uh, also, there is a, a one, one other thing I've neglected to mention, the game uh, has a bit of a uh, input lag when it comes to certain actions. And so I cannot just, well, I can roll off certain ledges apparently. The game ignores certain, some of its rule sets for when it's convenient to it. But sometimes it ignores your input. Uh, come on, run! Run! Oh, for God's sake. But sometimes the characters will just ignore some of your inputs, and then you're, then you're kind of screwed. So, yeah, I would, I wouldn't recommend you play this game. Honestly, I, I, I'm not inclined to. I'm not going to purchase the sequel when it comes out. Uh, and honestly, I'm not so sure if I'll ever play this game uh, again. It's doesn't give you much in terms of replayability. I, either it's. Once you explore every area and find all the collectibles, you could start a new gameplay, new game plus with harder difficulty. But it's this whole story is given to you once you're finished. Uh, there is no hidden endings. Uh, there are no hidden endings or big character, a character reveals their or choices. I mean, there are some minor dialogue options you can take through, similar to Titanfall 2, where you can choose between two two responses, but that doesn't affect the ending of the game. It's it's just uh, 
just there to fluff up the characters, and to be honest, these characters are planks of wood, all things considered. I do love the... I do like the enemy variations, though. I, every enemy has its own attack pattern, and... What the? And they're... And they're unique for every planet, so... Dathomir has its spiders and this Rancor-like creature. While Kashyyyk has its, uh... Big spiders and... And, uh... Hmm. Stormtrooper? No, wait. Stormtroopers are unique for... They're not unique, they're just... They're invading, so... Kashyyyk has big spiders and occasionally... And occasionally... And occasionally... Uh, some flying enemies that you can deal with, but... This game would probably work better if it was a linear experience where you... Where you didn't have to deal with... Uh, block meters and block... Oh, Uh, uh, but with block, uh, uh, with blocking meters, and it probably should. The game would probably work better if it didn't have, uh, if it didn't have Dark Souls uh, combat. If it was a regular slice and dice, uh, Del May Cry com copy, made, I think the game would have uh, worked better, honestly. Well, not Del May Cry, but uh, Batman Arkham, Arkham series combat flow would probably work better for this game. In Dark Souls, it's... it doesn't work. I'm honestly bored of this, and I, I honestly avoid most of the combat as, as it goes, as the game goes. I just fight when I have to, and that's about it. I ju I'm just gonna fight if I need to, but otherwise I... I'm just gonna run next... I'm just gonna run by most of my opponents and try to survive, and try to get to the next story, but... So yeah, that's uh, this is Jedi, this is Jedi: The Fallen Order. Uh, would I recommend it? No. You, if if you're interested, ask if if you're interested in the game, ask uh, and have friends that have it. Ask if you can try it out on their console or a PC. But otherwise, don't waste your money. Just just get Jedi Outcast or Jedi Academy. That's uh, it's an old game, but it's a uh, good. Good, it has good lightsaber combat. It also doubles as a first-person shooter with force abilities, and uh, they still have an active multiplayer that you can partake in. I mean, especially, especially Jedi Academy. That's that's still fun to play with uh, friends on, on LAN parties or online if you if you know anyone who plays it as well. This game, I play it once and I forget about it. It's forgettable. It's a forgettable experience. The characters are one note, the story is... Eh, the story is... The story is... Uh, it's not as complicated as... Uh, it's not as complicated as any other so origin older Star Wars games that's... That's a simple story where you have to find a holocron that at least lists... Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. I don't want to spoil the story, but the basic gist of it is uh, you have to find a colocron that will that lists all all known force sensitive children that in the from the past, present, and future, and that's if that uh, that's a major plot hole in my book. That's if there is a, a list of force sensitives, how come nobody discovered Anakin nor Palpatine? Seriously, so you would you think that? These guys would be discovered if they were listed as some of the most powerful Force users. Damn. But no, this is. Uh... <sighs> okay, Benami, calm down. You're. <sighs> Don't get angry about stupid things created by Disney. <sighs> okay, if I go along, it's just gonna be a rent video. But uh, yeah, I. I honestly don't like this. I generally don't support Disney Star Wars. I know this is a. Uh, it's supposed to be a modern take for a different audience, but still. If you're gonna ruin a good franchise with. not only decades, with decades of lore, comics, and books, and games, and. I'm gonna murder someone. And 
it's not going to be these guys because they are a too stupid and they cheat way too much. So, yeah, I would not recommend that you play this game if you can if if you have, if you can find an alternative. So uh, while I'm here, let's just uh, finish this off by giving you a look at the data bank, which is a journal listing all the information about local creatures, characters. Well, it gives you a bit. It gives you tidbits of about the characters, as well as information about certain areas and, and enemies you will encounter. And there's also a tactical guide that lists every opponent for you to deal with. Unfortunately, you cannot navigate it with the mouse and keyboard. You have to. You can just navigate it with the usage of of keyboard itself. Uh, granted, there are some interesting enemies that you can you can encounter. I do like these uh, perch troopers. They're they're tougher than they're tougher than regular stormtroopers, and they did receive specialized training that that makes them uh, that gives me a logical reason as to why they're capable of dealing with uh, while they're why are they capable of dealing with Jedi? They either have they have equipment that is that should nullify the the effects of the force on them, as well as the weaponry that should, eh, well, that should block a lightsaber. Because, uh, just give me a second, uh, there are some enemies that, uh, that can survive, uh, a lightsaber to the face. Uh, apparently, uh, apparently a stormtrooper commander has, uh, I, I don't know, better armor, uh, even though it's just a shoulder pauldron that should protect him from lightsaber, apparently. It takes a couple of heads to kill him, while a regular stormtrooper and a regular scout trooper die from one or two hits. It's... Uh, honestly, it's not a game I would recommend to anyone. Unless you're a big Disney... Star of fan of Star Wars Disney, I, then yeah, go, go ahead and play it for all I care, but uh, this game, I... I'd avoid it, honestly. It's, if you're interested in exploring uh, a big world, series, a couple of interesting, nicely designed maps with with some uh, mediocre collectibles, then yeah, go ahead and purchase the game. But uh, otherwise, if you're in for the combat, save your money, just buy Sekiro or Dark Souls. It's, you're better off than playing this. Anyway, guys, uh, that's it for me for, for this week. I'll... I'll, I'm working on the next video, so I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Ben Zombie, and good night.